Girl Boss Nation. <laughs> How are y'all doing? <laughs> Let's go. Yes, we here. The Boss Nation Bro, is here. My queen. <laughs> here to stay. Okay. Uh, we got to get, we'll, we'll start with this right now, real quick, because the, the, the internet. You're was, Christian. I'm Alexis, by the way. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, well, I'll get yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, this, uh, the, you know, the Boss Nation reveal of the new NWSL team in Boston. Uh, has Do we have the <laughs> wah, 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 wah sound? <laughs> you just gonna have to make the noise. We don't have <laughs> it on the board you. yet. So, <laughs> but it, it's been just, uh, just wild. You know, I think when I first saw the name, I was like, should I just dunk on this immediately without seeing if the rest of the mob has has <laughs> you know dunked on them? I'm like, we gotta get. I, I'm just gonna just dunk on them. Yeah, we gotta is, get out ahead of this. This thing. is crazy. Yeah, There's no yeah, yeah. way that this is like what the final uh, uh you know pro, you know name that we they, didn't need consensus from the internet. You and I knew immediately. <laughs> In fact, it seems so, like 99.9999 percent <laughs> of the of the internet knew immediately this was trash. Just feels good to be yeah. right. You know what <laughs> I, mean? uh, so I, I like, love when people is. With me, <laughs> I know a lot of people worked on it. They probably uh, hired a big old agency. They to come. did, and they got paid millions of dollars <laughs> to come up with this basura. <laughs> so not great, but well, uh, how much would you and me charge? <laughs> and, bro, look, I look, I look. I, I was like, I was like, let's have some fun here because uh, I, I got a list of all the names that they, uh, that they did not go with because uh, they might have been either a little bit worse okay. or they just, it just, they, or they, it could have been fine, but they just, they ended up going with Boss Nation. So, um, uh, let's go. Which we agree is a terrible name, but let's find out what they didn't grow with. Exactly. So, uh, I, so uh, Alexis, you let me know what you think uh, uh, on you. on each one. Girl, Boss Nation. <laughs> It's better than Boss Nation. <laughs> okay, right? But you know that's what they wanted to say. <laughs> you know that's what they wanted to Next say. Next up, Lady Revolution. Oh god. <laughs> that's actually kind of all right. kind of fire because uh, <laughs> it's the women's sport and it's the revolution. So I get it. All right, so whatever. How about this? No balls allowed. Hey. NBA. The NBA. <laughs> That's kind of what they went with. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A strange one. Next. That's kind of what they went with. They got a little trouble. Hey, the Boston Wahlbergs. <laughs> <laughs> I Not, couldn't hit that. <laughs> How about this? Lady Sponsorship secured, though. <laughs> Concession secured. <laughs> Lady Duncan. <laughs> Lady Duncan. That's kind of fire. It's kind of know? fire, I uh, think. The WNBA team from Boston would be like, come on. <laughs> no Boston, no tea party. Too long. That's fair. That's Too fair. Long. Uh, the Boston Bill Burrs. <laughs> Alex is not a fan of yeah. that one. Uh, if, you, if you know, you know. Everyone got to shave their head and be angry. <laughs> Shouts to everyone who's a member of our Patreon. You know. <laughs> the, 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 the Beantown Broads. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> I, you know what? For the culture in Boston, <laughs> that's probably the most respectful way they say ladies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, next no up. disrespect. I'm saying broad is a good thing. It's what you hear a lot of. The Boston Turfs. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that Chappelle signed up for the opening day. <laughs> okay. That's about T-E-R-E-F-S. Okay. Damn. Not great. So they, you don't want them cheering, uh, you know, up the trans-exclusionary yeah, radical yeah, yeah. feminist. That's not a great name. That's so fine. I'm glad they didn't go with that. Um, then but Chappelle and Rogan will be season ticket holders. <laughs> Next up, the last one, the Massachusetts Minute Women. Oh, you know what? We could all use some of that. <laughs> uh, why y'all take so long? <laughs> Damn. So that's, y'all got a Rubik's Cube, huh? <laughs> that, is not, that is not, those are all the names that they did not go with. Damn. Uh, some of them could have worked, some of them maybe not. But bro, this uh, this Boss Nation uh, reveal, I they also... They also re, uh, re, uh, released I an, they an apology. Gone, they should have gone with the Riveters, the Rosie the Riveters. Okay. Because can, then you can have the Revs and the Rivs. The Revs and the Rivs. Come on. <laughs> All And they have Riz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so Imagine they went with like Boston Riz. It's two Zs. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, this is the, the creative meeting. Uh, hopefully, if you want to use any of our, of our ideas, right. uh, feel free. Um, but yeah. But we, we couldn't get in part of the ownership group because we're not. Not, you know, we're not 
out of touch boomers. <laughs> so. Boston, they got to uh, catch it up to do a yeah. couple of those uh, so sorry. neighborhoods. So anyway. sorry to all the fans. <laughs> uh, but shout out uh, to everybody. They, they released an apology. They, did. they had to. They had to. About the, they, but they were apologizing for the, the, the announcement, campaign. the campaign, not the not specifically the name. No, because they try to go with too many balls. Too many balls. All right, bro. I mean, And they could, did it. They announced it at Dick's Sporting Goods. <laughs> I'm not making that up. I saw all the giggling you were doing on Morning yeah, Footy. Yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was a whole thing. My uh, suggestion, and I could and say on morning footy is too many balls you're gonna get in trouble they should have went the opposite we should have went not enough lips <laughs> it's just not enough lips <laughs> you know i mean talking about talking about right. the, the sport talking, use that first amendment yeah. right <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> talking yeah. about yeah. The sport. <laughs> okay Anyway. Not enough lips. <laughs> all right. We're all just, I mean, is it worse than too many balls? I, <laughs> I don't actually think it's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. That's the one. I'm, I'm just doing. saying, okay, everybody. Welcome to the cool again. Not enough lips. <laughs> Someone secure that for us. <laughs> Welcome to the cool again. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. A uh, lot to go over uh, today. Uh, we're going to be chatting uh, about the USMNT and uh, they're, they're getting game against mexico yeah uh, a, a couple other things we also have an incredible guest uh crazy who, i'm sure he's excited about the not enough lips movement <laughs> oh yeah, wait we, till he finds out, wait till he finds out. Uh, but we're gonna be joined by the gm of the los angeles galaxy oh, very yeah. classy person <laughs> yeah, yeah, on a yeah. classy show yeah this is we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get class it up after i'm wearing a shirt and tie thong <laughs> So <laughs> Will Koontz, Will Koontz will be joining us in yes. just a little bit uh, to, to talk about everything going on with the LA Galaxy. So uh, let's start today um, with the U.S. men's national team and their uh, match against uh, Mexico. We, we had Henry Bushnell, uh, Yahoo Sports uh, uh, writer and contributor, uh, to talk about the game against Panama. We were kind of looking forward a little bit, and I, and I think... You know, when I was uh, hearing the interview back, I'm like, "What? There's a, there's a little too much optimism in our voice." Like in hindsight, uh, as as soon as it was right for the moment, it was right for the moment. Yeah. But as soon as we were, um, as soon as we knew that so all these players were leaving. Not a great sign. Like, uh, well, are there people fighting garbage <laughs> cans just outside our door? There, I hope you don't hear it. You may not hear it in the background. You probably but don't hear it, but the, good God. <laughs> there are two literally like cartoonish characters fighting each other outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a puff of smoke. You ever see that cartoon where someone gets punched and they just fall head, heel, yeah. head, heel, but they stay stiff? That's kind of the sound That's coming kind of, from a lot just outside this wall. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so there was a little bit of uh, confidence that, or overconfidence that we had after, uh, you know, we knew that uh, Ricardo Pepe, Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, uh, a, a few other players uh, were, were leaving and going back to their clubs because it, the, the match against Mexico looked exactly like that, where yeah. it was like, this is clearly not our best group of players. And not only did from like a, it wasn't even like a technical level because I saw a lot of the commentary, um, you know, it wasn't like the quality of the players was so just so bad. It, was, it just seemed like a mentality thing or maybe a nervousness or fear. Um, I saw Charlie Davies on um, Call It What You Want uh, kind of, you know, screaming at the camera as he well, usually does. The Charlie way. <laughs> That's why that's why you hire the guy. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> uh, just screaming about like, oh, these guys don't care. And I don't, I don't even know. if it, I think that's too simple of an explanation of like they're they don't care it is i think they i think I the think moment is, was a little too big for them yeah i think this is my biggest problem with anyone talking about like previous generations because yeah you know nostalgia has a lot of uh romanticism attached to it it's actually uh like a, a bit of a disorder um so i tend not to look back and go oh, back so, so when day. when your lady's like hey back back when we first met you used to do this and that and you're like you're mentally ill honey. yeah <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know again with this you know <laughs> all right i'll call them they'll pick you up in half an hour bring the straight jacket i think, <laughs> I think it's necessary she's talking about last week again <laughs> <laughs> Bring the padded van. <laughs> what a wild Remember when you promised the again? We gotta. I, I feel bad for you, babe. Yeah, I, I don't hurts, have to come visit you this way. It hurts me more than us you, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> I'm doing this because I love you. Now, after I make this phone call, I'm gonna order wings, but I don't want you to think. It has anything to do with your abs? <laughs> Carter, uh, Carter, you okay? You gonna be all right? Carter's gonna get married, so he, he's Carter. at a hundred percent 
knowledgeable about what we're talking about. But Carter's getting married in like two weeks. <laughs> so there's a lot to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't your fault, babe. It's the chemicals in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Why you keep talking about Boss Nation? <laughs> <laughs> Take off got, that green pants suit. We got They're coming to get you. We gotta send you away again. Anyway, uh, so nostalgia, <laughs> I think, is done because we only remember like those little moments we want to remember. Uh, back in my day, we would have fought. Blah blah yeah. blah. The one thing I will give him credence with, or, or give him credit for, is this idea that like back in the day, the the American. The, the U.S. national team had to, like, fight for every point mm -hmm. because they weren't often considered better than the team across from them or felt they had a, pro a point to prove. And there was a little bit of not having that in this match. You know, but again, we, what was it, 1,866 days since Mexico had beaten the U.S. Yeah. At some point, they're going to catch you slipping. Sure. They caught us slipping. I think that's actually good for the rivalry. And in a way, I actually think this is good for preparing for the World Cup. We don't have any competitive matches. So imagine we had won this game against Mexico. The next game against Mexico, yeah, we'd be like, yeah, we beat them all the time. Sure. Now there's like, okay, now we got to get our lick back. I think there was a little bit of excitement of like, oh, let's see what these players can do. How can they handle this moment? Yeah. Um, and then but, we were like, how do we stop saying what these players can do? <laughs> <laughs> but then the the, the comments uh, from a lot of the former uh, men's national team players. <laughs> did we... Did we move our studio <laughs> next to a Foley artist? <laughs> Every sound possible. Huh? I don't think you can hear this, but yeah, I doubt it. Someone is just literally moving a chair as slowly as she can <laughs> across the entirety of our ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's bananas. <laughs> the, so I was saying, the former national team players come out uh, because they, there is a little bit. I, I don't. I wonder how much of the balance is. Of, it's a little back in my day. It is a little back in my day, but I wonder what the balance is of, you know, criticizing them and criti criticizing the program, and also, you know, a lot of these. Players, they have the the phone numbers for all the players that are on yeah, the why team. Are you telling it's, the press? You just, <laughs> you also, us. you're a big name, dude. They'll pick up the phone if you call. <laughs> you know. So Tim Howard, um, he uh, he wrote a piece, and Tim Howard is is, you know, we've we've worked with Tim. Yeah. Tim is a, a hero. Uh, you know, he's a reason I'm an Everton fan. He's also a very thoughtful guy when it comes to the na not just national team, but like his former clubs. And yeah, stuff. yeah. But he's, he's very thoughtful he's, in his criticism of Everton. Like he's strict, but he doesn't say in a way that's disrespectful. He's not. So I take his word pretty well. He's not bombastic. No. Uh, uh, but I, I think. Mr. Bombastic. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. Uh, he's he's a contributor for the Guardian now, or I think it's the Guardian. Dude we, got mad jobs, bro. <laughs> yeah, my man got all the jobs. Say some. Jobs, Yo, us, Tim Howard. Um, but you know, I think the nature of now Tim Howard being a um, you know, and writing op eds like a so, thought leader, yeah, yeah. And he wrote one about Christian Pulisic and he's talking about well, like an ops ed, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's been uh, you know, giving his perspective, and I think with 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 his experience and uh, being on the national team, playing in the Premier League, and all this stuff. But he uh, he had a couple comments about Christian Pulisic, and he said uh, Christian Pulisic left the USMNT squad to limit his workload. Fans have every right to be frustrated at such a crucial time. Uh, Pulisic is our biggest and best player, uh, and and this was no normal USMNT camp. Uh, it marked the start of Pochettino's reign and the countdown to the 2026 World Cup. Even if he's not playing, he should still be there to create the culture and set an example. And uh, I'll read, this is the last quote. He goes, uh, I've been a senior player and a big personality in the locker room. I demanded a lot of people. And what I found, the moments uh, to show your gravitas tend to come off, off the pitch. So I, half of it I disagree with. The other half I agree with. Okay. Like, I, I kind of understand the, you know, like, You've got to show some strength towards Milan and say, like, no, he has to stay here. Mm -hmm. This is important. And I kind of get the sentiment. Like, I don't disagree with the sentiment that's like, all right, this is Pochettino's start. If you're the leader, you should probably be here. You know what I mean? You should probably, even if it's just to oversee, just kind of have that culture of, like, the young players or the, the players that aren't starters can come to you and talk to you or can kind of get your yeah, yeah. thoughts. But also, dude, Christian Pulisic ain't the type of leader that Tim Howard was. Sure, yeah. I yeah, and I would, I'd add to this, like, to focus solely on Pulisic is, I think it's a little bit unfair. No, I think it's fair because he's the captain, so to speak. I agree, but but if if it was just Pulisic that left and everyone else stayed, then I, I think that would make more sense. But clearly, this is a 
some sort of strategy uh, where they were focusing on the health of these players. I think it was more Milan saying like, all right, it's a new coach. We can get away. Well, with we, we can speculate. I don't know. I don't. That's my the, what I. The it, it could I be. Get from but it it's, was, is it Milan? Is it Juve? Is it also PSV that take it? It's, you know, yeah. are they all saying the same thing? Yeah, I don't Stewart, think so. Ernie Stewart, who's the head of PSV, knows I, didn't release Pepe for the for the Olympics. And now is that calling him back early? This is the guy who ran U.S. soccer. That was his previous job. So I don't imagine Pochettino is being bullied by the managers or or, or presidents of these other clubs to these get the players. Might have been done before that, might possibly. Before so that. I, but if, I, but I, so basically, I understand the 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 Tim Howard's perspective and Charlie Davies' perspective, or, or I understand as a player and and the the benefit of keeping those players there. I also understand like. Maybe they've logged a bunch of minutes. Maybe it just might be good to not have them travel to Mexico and and just get, uh, you know, we don't want to have these players not be available for the World Cup. Well, that's the other thing, right? Like, players on, the rest of the players on Milan, for the most part, don't have the travel that Christian Pulisic has. Mm -hmm. He he has to cross the Atlantic, go to Mexico. That's really rough on your body. And then to get back into into playing form for the weekend where the, this weekend club football's back. Yeah. It kind of makes sense to go back. And I get it because it's a rival and it's the first game in Mexico in like forever. Apparently we haven't played a game in Mexico in years. I can't, I, I could look back and try to find the, the date, but I get the, was it the, the qualifier that we were at the World Cup qualifier? I think, I think it is. It might've been. The yeah. No, no. Um, for me or a friendly, we haven't played a friendly in Mexico. I think since 2009, mm -hmm. but for me, I get the. I guess for everyone else in the room, when we were talking about this in Morning Footy before the show, there was a lot of people who've been associated with U.S. soccer or soccer in America for a long time. I was the only one being like, eh. But I guess I'm just thinking of it from a more modern perspective, which is like, yo, this is the best Christian Pulisic's ever been in his career. Mm -hmm. This is the most trusted he's been at any club in his career. He's in the top form. He might be the most informed player in the Serie A right now. For him to go back, I'd rather that continue, that trend continue, and you know, miss a rivalry match against Mexico that at the end of the day is a friendly. It's a it's a glorified, it's yeah. a glorified, you know, uh preseason. My, look, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I think where I'm at is I probably would have preferred that they went to Mexico and didn't play rather than going back to their clubs just for I kind of agree with Tim Howard here. I, I think I it, it is. I'm not. I'm better, not like, and I don't how think there's any. You? Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's any wrong way. Like I don't think anybody did anything egregiously wrong. It yeah. was just like this was the approach that they went with, and we just have to live with it. And and the, the, we also have to accept that we're already in the World Cup, so we have to figure out what 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 do we want to prioritize: the health of our players, the minutes that they get, the experience. Do we want them to play in really difficult matches where they could get injured? I think that is also a little bit of a negative because like, how are we going to have this? sort of cutthroat mentality when we're already in the World Cup and we yeah. don't really... So we have to find ways to create environments and moments that will grow the player's kind of like experience and mentality to be prepared for that moment. So I think not having those those great players play in this game, again, I think they should have just been on the bench watching the game and been able to support if... if or, or even play just a, a couple minutes. But this is... Uh, I... I I sort of agree with Tim here. It's just like they probably just should have gone for the sake of at least like being around Pochettino for the more. Optics. Not even that's the optic. Being around Pochettino more, working with him in 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 that environment. Yeah. Seeing how he handles it, seeing how he speaks to the other players. Just like there's no way you can argue that it wouldn't have been beneficial for them to be there. Uh, other that's than all. the travel. Yeah, on the travel. Exactly. Yeah. There are there are pros and cons. So I I see what U.S. Yeah. Soccer went well, look, with. Okay. Right. Okay. Agree to disagree. Okay. Right. Look, <laughs> you know that doesn't happen on first take. Shake nah, your hands after. Huh? <laughs> that's uh, so ridiculous. <laughs> so preposterous. Uh, but yeah. But look. Overall, just to wrap that up, they didn't play well. Uh, we we were kind of uh, in in our run that we're like gonna talk about like what players stood out. Or what, but they, there's Nobody nothing to really say. Out. Nobody stood Brandon out. Brandon Vasquez stood out. Brandon Vasquez, I thought twenty minutes and got seventy percent of the shots. The whole team. Sergeant took. is. I, I don't know what else. How many more opportunities does he need to he's, shine? He's getting demoted to corporal. Uh, <laughs> wow. no, no, no. <laughs> okay. I don't even know if that's right. He's I don't know if that's okay in the army. maybe private. Uh, private. Yeah. Yeah, we know that's beneath. I don't know uh, army stuff. Anyway, yeah. uh, but no, th uh, there's really nothing. Uh, like I'm, I'm also concerned. I'm like, did did Matt Turner need to start again? You know. 
Did Busio and Aiden Morris need to start again? Probably not. I would have rather I, seen I Sandra Tessman and Busio. Sure, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Look, I'm the the sergeant starting. I don't think was a necessity because we saw him against Panama. Yeah. But not nah, just like I just I want these play, players to 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 show up. Bro, and the shine. next two games are like for real. Yeah, we so, play Jamaica home and away. Exactly. It's so. for real. For real. So, all right, uh, let's move on to Inglaterra, to England, Bro. because they we were talking about the rumors on the last episode that Tuchel or Pep, and that's it, it's over. Thomas Tuchel is the coach for the, the English national team. As soon as Pep said no, they were like, Tuchel, you're in, baby. <laughs> We've always wanted you. Yo, too cool is what we call you <laughs> over here, bro. Okay, uh, you're corporal now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Colonel. <laughs> yeah, Sergeant got demoted. Right? Um, commissioner, what happens after Sergeant? So at the, the end of the day, I think this is probably the best coach they could have picked from what's available. I think so, too. But England being who they are, mm. have taken this as if it's the worst thing that's ever happened <laughs> to them as a nation. Yes. Uh, There's uh, a, one, of the, one of the headlines was a dark day for England. Amazing. I mean, is, are we, is this? What is going on <laughs> with you as a nation, bro? <laughs> that's such a wild uh, reaction. <laughs> they, someone, okay, someone okayed that. <laughs> a dark day for England. I think, I mean, if you want, the the Brexit folks you know, go off. I mean, that's that's the headline you the use. The editor in chief of that newspaper it wears like an army jacket with like the pin still <laughs> on it. This is a dark day for England. Damn, a day that will live in infamy. I'm like, y'all, nah, we got. Nah, we did one of them. We already. did one of those already. Yeah. And it was, never forget this day. Like New York was, got that one. It was for a much more serious yeah. event. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a. I, I think that's really the story here. It's just the the reaction to it. Tuchel, I think, will be a perfect. Perfectly fine manager. He's had uh, some rough uh, stints. It's just, it's it's so strange because he he gets tremendous opportunities. He's he won is, eleven trophies. He is one of the top tier coaches in world football. We all know that, dude. He came in half the season at Chelsea and won Champions League. Yep, with Christian Pulisic. Uh, but at at, at Bayern, uh, there's always like that fell apart. It fell apart. That was a little. That was a weird one. There's always like, but that's kind of like what always follows him. It's just like this weirdness. There's always something uncomfortable. Something's yeah, something's yeah, yeah. All, it's like either he rubs players the wrong way, or, or the front media. office, or media. Well, like, everyone's like, he's so good with the media. Yeah, for now, it always turns. <laughs> something a, always happens. I'm like, why is it weird? There's now? always a. It's the Tuchel plot twist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time, uh, and I so I don't know when it's gonna happen. Uh, but you know it will at some point. It will. And so, with the English media, look at what they've done to this man since getting hired. Right. He answered all the right questions. One of the questions asked of him during the press conference was, will you sing the national anthem? Oh, they do this all the time. It's just so... <laughs> <What> is- <laughs> Who cares about national anthems? It's so dumb. Are you wearing the poppy? Yeah. Wear the poppy. <laughs> Yo, if, imagine an Irish <laughs> manager for England. Oh, it, my God. So, look, the uh, the response... And, and you, uh, Jamie Carragher was on uh, Morning Footy. Right, because uh, he has a show called It's Called Soccer, and they talk about... <laughs> well, yeah, we're gonna get them on the show to uh, you know. We answer, gotta, we gotta to ask them this. about like okay. what, what's the soccer in this podcast <laughs> you'll be talking about. Okay. I hear a lot of football, mate. <laughs> so, uh, but Jamie Carragher was on, and and he was he's been making a lot of noise about how he's not happy with the appointment because he feels that the English manager should be English, and uh, you know, it feels. Some people would argue it's a little xenophobic uh, to suggest that, and and some people would also say like this is just. A, 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 a debate that we always have in in football, right? Where it's like the you know no foreign manager has ever That's won a World, World Cup, Cup, and yeah. he I like on Morning Footy he made a decent point about the um just the uh I forgot the exact he did make a decent point. I, I was break, it that like it should be the best from each of those countries? Because that's actually not a bad point. It, oh no, it's no, to say like the World Cup should just be a competition of the best, the best goalkeeper, the best center backs, the best. And why not the best manager from that country? No, I remember. In a way, I'm like, all right, I get that. But when you say it the way y'all been saying it, <laughs> that's a, that's what it is. He was he made good points about how that the managers who have won World Cups aren't necessarily the most decorated club managers and don't even yeah, have a was, ton of experience. I didn't want to I didn't want to put him on the spot, but he says Argentina. 
Uh, Argentina Scaloni. didn't want Scaloni to be the manager. That's true. He fell into it. No one else wanted to be the manager. Yeah, yeah. He was a, a youth manager, so they kept, they were like, all right, can you just hold on to this spot for us? Mm -hmm. And then he kind of kept winning, so they kind of kept him on. Yeah, yeah. And there was never any confidence that he should be the manager until he won the World Cup. Sure. <laughs> he almost got sacked after the loss to Saudi Arabia in the first in the group stage. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I'm like, you're kind of right, but you're kind of wrong. De La Fuente also was a youth manager that won cups with the youth team and they were like all right well he knows the players and they're young so you go manage it wasn't the you're the right guy for us it was kind of the same as southgate southgate kind of fell backwards into that job yeah no one goes out and there's especially in england you would not be the guy to be there's no one in the fa that would say like here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go out and get this guy you've never heard of that guy would have to quit his job he would be lambasted in the media. Yeah, I mean, the he made the point about Southgate also not having uh, a huge amount of experience, but also but 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 getting uh, an incredible amount of success uh, with the English uh, national team. So I get the I get it from that perspective. It, it's starting to feel a little bit. Um, not antiquated exactly. It is. It is, and I, I that's the reason I asked the question I did this morning. I'm like, for everyone who's forty and over, that's very upset about this because yo, if you're a millennial or Gen yeah, Z or yeah. Alpha, you're like, Who gives a sh what nationality you are. <laughs> I don't care about your passport. I care about these wins. Yeah. You know? Um. Yeah. It's a you know, and then the and look, there's reasons why Germans and English in the past have not gone along. They've there's had beef. Yeah. In the past. <laughs> to borrow a line from uh, Norm Macdonald, Germany decided to go to war with who? The world. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then after that, they did it again. <laughs> you know? To, you know? So, so I get it. I get why. But, yo, we've moved on. The real question is shine the light on yourself, bro. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did why did the FA have to go get a German to, man, to manage the English national team? If you really think that English an Englishman should be the manager of the England national team, why were there no good options? Why was Graham Potter not considered or why was he not good enough? If he's sitting back just collecting a check for doing nothing, people talk about Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe has a job, man. Yeah, yeah. You can't just go tell the Saudis like, yo, we taking your guy. <laughs> and also he didn't do well in the knockout competition. He it was terrible. Uh, in the group stage and and in the knockout tournament setup that the Champions League was last season, mm -hmm. which is what the what the World Cup is. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's I, I, I'm like I don't. How upset do does everybody really need to be about this? And and it's just England, bro. They just need something to get that. that yeah, the audience and it, and is riled it, up. And I think it's the 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 frustrating thing is about the response is like England are good at, and they have been good under Southgate uh, in in these tournaments. They've gotten to what two finals? Uh, they haven't won anything. They haven't won anything, but it doesn't mean that they're not good or they're not good enough to win. It's really there's a little bit of you know. I think if Southgate makes a couple different personnel decisions, doesn't always start Harry Kane. But that's the big question, right? Can you advance on what Southgate's already done? I think we everyone would agree Southgate hit a ceiling, right? Like. We kind of know what he's going to do. Tactically, yeah. we understand what he's doing. Nothing, none of this is a secret. Can we get someone to, to take that next step? I think what Garrett Southgate did was elevate the English national team as a, as a unit and as a culture, right? He got them to, to not be... Remember, we were having this conversation with Flex when we were in England, and he was like, no, like I don't want my Manchester United players talking to Liverpool players when they're on the national team. And I, we were like... Yeah. What? Like, bro, that's so <laughs> old school thinking. But like, that was the way the national team was in the back in the day. He got them all to be like one family. There's pictures of, you know, Bokaya Saka jumping into pools on a unicorn, inflatable yeah, yeah. unicorn and stuff. Like, yo, he brought out their personalities. He got them to have fun when they were with the national team. And he got them to 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 be a little bit closer to the media, have a bit more of a personal relationship with the people that are writing about them. Where in the past, these people were just like they would try to shoot them away from the players and because they were writing such wild stuff about these players and the coaches and stuff. So now it's like, all right, now y'all are unit. Now y'all kind of get along. You have a better understanding. Doesn't mean you're not going to write crazy stuff. But now you know me personally. It's a little bit harder for you to be sure. wild, too wild. It's it's what Ber Berhalter did with the same US. thing. Yeah. Literally the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, you did that. Berhalter got the kids to be a, to be men. All right, boom. Both of y'all carried us to here. Who carries us to the next one? Go get yourself a tactician. That's exactly what Thomas Tuchel is. Yeah. Have you heard uh, some of the specifics? I just I was reading this earlier this morning about how Tuchel does. Uh, he does passing drills while also uh, giving players math equations to figure out. So they they basically 
um, can't pass the ball until they've answered like a math equation. Cole so, Palmer will never <laughs> pass the ball in training. So it's a little bit like they, he, he basically makes your brain work uh, actively uh, uh, or more aggressively while you're in the middle of drills to, uh, you know, I, I, I actually noticed that we were doing this uh, again because I didn't grow up playing. Uh, we were doing drills at TST. And and some of the drills that we did were, uh, you know, whether it's uh, passing drills or just like w- one touch or keeping the ball up in the air or whatever. And basically it would be simple. It would be like um, name your favorite comedy, like a comedic movie or whatever. And but you so you have to as as the before you can pass the ball, you have to say what uh, what your favorite comedy is. Uh, and it's like. As it's going, you're like, and the ball gets to you. It's like, oh, crap, I got to think. You know, it's just like this extra little step of decision like. Decision making. Decision making. Yeah, now only thinking about the ball, thinking about what comes next. It's all smart. Now, if I was doing calculus while the ball's yeah. in the air, I'm like, all right, all right, slow down, Tommy Tooks. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is getting a little hard. <laughs> Yo, you need to give me a TI-86 <laughs> okay. in training. Can I use chat GPT during fact, this drill? <laughs> bro, I'm going to ask if that's okay with you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, bro. Yeah, a, a wild, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, turn of events with everything going on with Tuchel. I wish him the best. Hopefully it goes well. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's get to our conversation well, with Will Kuntz, LA Galaxy I'm general so manager. I mean, Bro, I, CEOs, GMs. We, mm. got, we are the front office podcast. <laughs> okay. The, this is, uh, yeah. what is this, uh, Diary of, uh, what's that dude that uh, does that show? The Wimpy Kid? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> of, of CEO, Diary of CEO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're that, we're that dude. Who asked the questions in that ASMR voice? <laughs> so I'm yeah. sure Will Goods is gonna. Well, we don't make you cry, Will. <laughs> it's good for the views, <laughs> it's man. Like, it's a, well, let's uh, let's chat with Will Goods. I mean, I want to say it's not every day we get guests like this, but it's starting to become every day. This <laughs> every, is amazing. Everybody wants to do this show. Bro, if you wear a suit on a regular, if you know how to handle a deck in front of a uh, conference room table, you, if you carry around a briefcase, bro. If, <laughs> If you are reading a newspaper on a subway by folding, I don't know what era we're wearing, talking about. You know, wearing a fedora yeah, that says press on it. All right. No, but honestly, if you're an important person in the world of soccer and you haven't done the show, guess what? You're not an important person in soccer. <laughs> but that, that's why this man is incredibly important. We are. There's joined- so many correlations here. Brooklyn native, Yankees, LAFC, now LA Galaxy. It's crazy. Okay. I cannot wait to talk to this man. I'm honored to have him. Yes, uh, the general manager for the Los Angeles Galaxy. We are joined by Will Coons. Will, what's up, man? Fellas, how we doing? Thanks for having me on. We're doing well. This is uh this is exciting because uh I mean, you know, we we've had a couple GMs on the show. I think the last one we had uh, was Mike Jacobs, the Nashville mm-hmm. uh GM, and it was a it was a f- interesting and fun convo about just the day-to-day of what it's like to be a GM in Major League Soccer with Gam and Tam and the the rule book is uh is something like about this. And they keep <laughs> sending you PDFs to add. <laughs> we got new rules now. But this is a <laughs> That was, la- that was last week's rule book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we off that. Um, but this is uh, this is also exciting for a different reason. Obviously, the Los Angeles Galaxy, one of just the, the, the premier clubs of Major League Soccer, a, a historic team, an important club. And now uh, you are the GM for that team, uh, a, a team where in the last couple of years, it's been a little rocky, a little bit difficult. Yes, Galaxy have had big names, but it just... You know, it just couldn't always kind of figure it out. But right now, y'all are in first place in the Western Conference. So how does it feel? Mm. And, and what was the GM's contribution to getting <laughs> the team in first 100%. place? We got to, we gotta, you know, pat yourself on the back right now, Will. Now, listen, fellas, with the caveat that, like, I love me some me, uh, I think <laughs> I've got a really easy job, right? I'm, I'm trying to get guys to come play for the Los Angeles Galaxy come out here, live in LA. Like we were talking before we started recording, you know, it's, it's 70 degrees here and people are freezing, right? Like this is a, an incredible club, an incredible city. Um, and I'm just lucky to, to have the job that I have. Be honest when you're talking to prospective, you know, DPs, right? Potential players that you want to bring in. Does it make it easier that you one are saying you get to live in LA and two, that you're a Brooklyn dude talking to him. So you got a kind of a different energy. You're not showing up like, what's up, bros? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, listen, being from Brooklyn, <clears throat> in all walks of life, definitely helps, right? Because the third thing is like, listen, I don't know what you think you're going to make, 
but you're probably not going to make it here. Right? So that's the, uh, okay, uh, yeah. the first realistic. two definitely A chopped cheese is third. like less than 10 bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, I'm just, I'm just not trying to waste anybody's time, right? we got to keep it moving. All yeah. right. I'm, what, I'm, where, straight up I'm, I'm also from Brooklyn. I grew up in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. What part of Brooklyn are you from? Okay, I grew up in Carroll Gardens. Oh, my God. I live but right the, there. The Carroll yeah, Gardens I, I grew to... up in, yeah, it kind of doesn't really exist. And now it's fancy. Now it's got, you know, media uh, celebrities and everybody yeah. living there. Uh, <laughs> Again, so it took me six years to find cheap rent. I actually live above the gross, so I'm, on, I'm in Cobble Hill. Technically. Yeah, yeah. I, I, went to, I went to high school oh, nearby. Okay, yeah, my parents are in Cobble there as well. No, amazing, awesome. man. No, there, there, there is something, you know, the, the one thing you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, the, the, my first introduction to you, our first introduction to you was when you were at LAFC. And um, that must have been a, a, a big decision uh, as well. I mean, I, I guess you didn't have to move apartments when you went from <laughs> LAFC to, to, uh, to Galaxy. But can you talk a little bit about just that uh, decision? Or is, is there any... Uh, or maybe we're making too much of it. Is it was it even a big deal? Or are we at the point where the rivalry is at a thing where like even front office people can't? It's like Celtic Rangers, or yeah, is it yeah. cool? <laughs> I mean, listen, nobody's coming to firebomb the house, right? Like yeah. we didn't <laughs> okay, okay, go into witness protection or change our name or anything like that. Um, no, and it wasn't like I left LAFC to come join the Galaxy. My contract was up uh, at LAFC, and you know it's it's a it's a business, and so it was the right time. I think based on the body of work, what we had done there, what I was looking to do, uh, it was kind of a natural time to see what was out there. I actually thought I was going to end up in Austin. And I talked to my wife about it. And she was like, you know, I, I really don't want to live in Texas. And I was like, but babe, you know, Austin's great, good food. She was like, I don't want to live in Texas. I was like, you love country music? They got yeah. music. She's like, I really don't <laughs> want to say it a third time. So I was like, yeah. okay, that's, that's off the deal. Um, but yeah, when the wife, if the wife have to uh, say it a not- third time, it's really, you're in a bad <laughs> spot. You could call me Buckaroo. <laughs> There's <laughs> benefits. <laughs> Cowboy boots, big buckles, right? Yeah. Uh, you're not selling so, me here, honey. <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, okay. So then it was like, okay, you know, what? What's how are we going to pivot now? And um, I've known Greg Vanny for a long time. You know, my first year at the league office, uh, one of the clubs I worked with was uh, Toronto when Tim, Tim Bezuchenko was there and Greg was actually the academy director. So, um, you know, I reached out to, to Greg. We kind of had a little conversation and, and that led to an, an opportunity here. I mean, how do you how do you how do you not panic after a season like last season? Because bro, y'all didn't really add too much. I mean, pencil is an incredible find, but. You didn't add too much. And now all of a sudden you're going from worst to first. How do you not panic as a GM? Because if I'm playing football manager, I'm like, delete the save. You know what I mean? <laughs> this never happened. <laughs> I'm starting over. I mean, listen, if this was football manager, you know, it definitely escaped load from the uh, previous <laughs> save, right? I'm trying to run it back. Um, well, you know, last year was really challenging, right? And I, I came in, in in late March, and I think there's video out there of, of me in late May, like I'm pulling Greg away from a, a post game conversation, we'll called a conversation with uh, the supporters in Victoria Block. Um, it, it was it was tough. You know, we went through a lot with injuries, but if you look at that season, we had a really difficult start, and then about halfway through the season, things really turned around, and we started to get a little bit of a rhythm, start putting some good results together. And at the end, you know, we just we had injuries to, to Javier, injuries to Gaston. And so even though we brought in Diego Fagundes, Eddie Cerillo, uh, Maya Yoshida, Billy Sharp, you know, we were right there the last couple of weekends on the verge of making the playoffs, uh, uh, but just couldn't, you know, couldn't kind of keep it rolling. But everybody who was still here and everybody who came was really excited to put that in the rearview mirror. And that was the big opportunity coming to this year is like, guys. It's a fresh slate. We know we have quality here. We know we have guys who are hungry, guys who want to show everybody that last year was an aberration. Uh, and then with the new pieces we brought in, you know, uh, Joe Gabriel Peck, uh, you know, John McCarthy. You know, I say like, you know, Joe's from Ghana, Gabriel's from Brazil, you know, John's from Philly, which is like being in a totally different country also. Um, you know, just being able to bring in guys from, from different parts of the world uh, and add to that group that we already had. Um, made it really exciting. Like in January you could tell that like, everything was different. No, it's been great. I actually I'm, voted for Gabriel Peck as my newcomer of the year and I forgot to even mention him in the beginning. <laughs> no, it's been great. I mean, look, I, I even uh you know, one of when I first started going to MLS matches, I would go to like Metro Stars games, but then uh when Beckham came into the league, uh the, I, I remember being at those games and just it feeling like, all right, this is 
I was I was always casually excited to go see a soccer game, but this felt like a a, a significant moment. And the guy, every time the Galaxy came uh, 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 to the East Coast to play, I, I wanted to go see them. Is there any uh, pressure to live up to those standards of not only success but just the the the, the fanfare of like you, the Galaxy used to fill out stadiums in away for away teams? Is there anything? Uh, do you guys think about that uh, when it comes to picking that uh, you know finding players to join the team? Yeah, for sure. It, it reminds me a lot of what we did when I was at the Yankees, right? And in a lot of ways, I think the, the two clubs are similar. There's a lot of tradition here, a lot of history here. And with that comes expectation. So, you know, don't come here if you think, hey, I'm just going to be chilling in Manhattan Beach and, and hanging out uh, on vacation, right? You're coming here to win, uh, to compete, to, to win back the city. And I think that's something that really appeals to a lot of guys. But we, we really do our homework not just on the player's ability on the field, but, you know, his makeup, his character. We talk to you know, teammates, you know, how about how he is in training. We talk to coaches about what he's like as a person, uh, try and find people who've worked with him, you know, as a young player to really understand, all right, okay, is this the kind of guy who can come here and, uh, you know, push us over the top? Because cause our fans are, are demanding results, right? <laughs> that's that's a great that, problem man. to have, but uh, but we can't run last year back, so... Um, you know, we feel really good about the the work we did and the guys we brought in uh, to help add to the group. Yeah, we, yeah. I mean, look, I, it's a little different than Yankees, right? You're, this is M MLS we're talking about. You can't just send a speedboat to Cuba to zero or two. and pick a. <laughs> you can't send a speedboat to Cuba and pick up a couple number ten. You know what I mean? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Hey, listen, Shout you, to my people. Stitch me up already, man. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, right? I mean, you know, that's Yelio, by the way, right? So my people, know, I'm Cuban, so not, let's go. Not judging how you. Scout, right? Well, hey, hey, everyone has their own way of getting in the league, you know? Uh, but where, how do you, how difficult is it finding those gems? Gabriel Peck, Panso, probably not players that a lot of MLS fans even would have been able to point out. Or even, or I'll just add, like, convincing Ricky Pooj to come uh, uh, join the team. I mean, that, right. that's a big uh, move as well because we know the quality, but it's also selling the, that project to him too. Right, but unearthing some of those gems, that's, that's got to be tough, no? Yeah, it, it's look. It's a combination of of knowing what you're looking for, right? That's the most important thing. And and I think one of the things that I was able to do when I came in was sort of say, hey, we don't we don't need anybody that anybody's heard of before. Like if these guys, you know, I'll say like if they're sexy, right? If they come in, they help us win games. If they play hard, if they're you know dynamic, if they score goals, if they uh, really compete, our fans will love them. If we win games. LA is like New York. Like, what have you done for me lately, right? Like, you got to win. And so. The most important thing is that we're finding guys who can come in and, and be at the level that we need. Um, and that makes that a lot easier, right? We don't need to go out and find somebody who's an established star or anything like that. Then, you know, you got to do the work of, okay, what exactly are we looking for and, and who's got it? Um, and making sure that, you know, we're finding guys, again, not just with the quality, but look, this league is different, right? Like you got to play uh, through the summer. Uh, which is really you no know, nobody else does that. You got to fly across a continent, masquerading as a country. Uh, you know, I think I remember talking to Giorgio Chiellini when I was at LAFC, and he was like, "California is the size of Italy, but there's three teams in California, and there's you know 80 teams in Italy, and so you just the geography is tough, the schedule is tough, um, uh, everything's a little bit different, and making sure that uh, guys can adjust to that is really important. So you you go looking for guys that you think can play at the level you have and then make the adjustment to living in U S playing in MLS. Um, and then, yeah, like we, we do the work and you watch the games and, and look, we watch Pep, we watch Painsill. These guys are fast. They're, they're killers. Mickey Yamane, you know, had played his whole career in Japan, but you know, Kawasaki, uh, had a lot of success when he was there. One of the best 11 in the league, I think three times. So, you know, getting competitive guys, like I said, who, uh, who are eager for the opportunity and want to help bring us back to the top. Yeah, I mean, it must feel good, especially as a GM. I mean, we know th there's the occasional you 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 scout a player, you bring him into the team, and maybe it's a flop. It doesn't really work out. Something goes wrong. But when it works, how's where's the confidence at? Where's Will Kuntz's confidence? It's just like every time he gets an assist or a goal, you're like, oh, you look, you, you tap the person next to you. That was me. Yo. I made the phone call. You, <laughs> even, you wouldn't even know where to look for dude. <laughs> No, listen, I'm damaged goods from the Yankees days, right? Like I, George Steinbrenner was the owner when I was an intern, and it was like, if we don't win the World Series, nobody should have an expectation of keeping their job, wow. right? So, look, it's not the healthiest environment to grow <laughs> up in, and 
Uh, but look, we got, you know, we're really happy with all the success we've had. I'm really proud of our guys, but we've got our eyes set on, on the big prize, right? And so now is not the time to start celebrating or, or feeling too good. Uh, okay. You were an intern. And while that's George... I'm like, I'm like the wet blanket around. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you were an intern while George Steinbrenner was still there. Oh yeah. No, he was, uh, actually I got my internship from Mr. Steinbrenner cause, uh, he was a, uh, college alum of Williams college where I went to school. So I wrote him a letter during like when basketball season, all my friends were out partying. I was at home trying to get some sleep and I was like going through an alumni directory. Uh, so I was like, yeah, what, what the hell? Let me write him a letter. Um, and that turned into an internship working for him. And so when I finally got to meet him, I think it was in like June of that first year. And I, you know, I walked up to him and said, Hey, Mr. Steinbrenner, I'm, you know, I'm Will Coons. Thank you so much for your internship. And he looked at me, he's like, who? <laughs> and afterwards, somebody came up to me, he's like, look, we, we really, you really don't want to talk to Mr. Steinbrenner, right? Like, you, you really just go back to your office and then we'll tell you if you can go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> so like, you're probably the only I'm person like, I, I can yeah. ask this. How close to reality was the Seinfeld version of George Steinbrenner? I mean, like, the, the voice was uncanny. You know? <laughs> um, a, a few less, a few less F-bombs, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, no, Larry David definitely got the voice down right. Hilarious. That's wild. That's so funny. I mean, like, I, I have another, like, I'm Dominican, Alexis is Cuban, and we work in soccer, which makes no sense. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but the. We're like the Will Koontz of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the Listen, MLB. Like Let me hit that. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. The MLB playoffs uh, are happen, happening right now. I'm a Mets fan, unfortunately. I'm Alexis a is a, fan. a Yankees me, fan. Me too. Me too. Okay. Interesting. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so working yeah, yeah i told you I, i'm all messed up <laughs> you love you just love working with rivals man <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I love the drama man i love the drama <laughs> you wow. are just, oh my god thanksgiving is a madhouse right. at the coon's house <laughs> <laughs> bro but, when, when we were in the playoffs like when, when the Yankees were playing the tigers my sisters would be rooting for the tigers and i'd be like guys this is my career and yeah yeah, like, yeah. Well, that's, Hilarious. Hilarious. that's an interesting yeah. thing because and that's when when i was uh uh reading up on your uh your career and i was and and I saw um, uh, Yankees. I was gonna ask if, like, you know, would you ever uh, be the GM for the Mets or something? I ever work for the Mets, and clearly the answer is yes. <laughs> you, yeah. you, it would have been a possibility as well, right? That would have been too. That would have been too much, though, right? Because it's, look, it's bad enough already. You like, you get, you get a job like this, and all of a sudden, everybody you know thinks they know more than you about the job, <laughs> right? And if, and if I had to, to do us. that with my with my homies from from Brooklyn, yes, yeah, for real, like. If I had to do that with like the Mets, but it'd be too much. It'd be uh, too much. <laughs> the God. entire city. It's similar. It's weird. Like it happens <laughs> uh, as comedians. It happens to us as well because it's a lot of like, hey, you know what? You, you know what you should have done up there? I think, uh, or, you know, I got this joke you can use. <laughs> or uh, if they try to talk to us about soccer, they're like, why don't they just make the goals bigger? <laughs> it's like, yeah, no one's ever thought I of get that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, the the addition uh, back to soccer. The addition of Marco Royce uh, on this team. I mean, a, an exciting uh, uh, player. You know, th there is the. I guess uh, you know as far as the, the criticism uh, of of the signing because I know some people might have been concerned with you know they call MLS retirement league and blah blah blah. But this man still has a, a lot to offer. And I just saw a, a recent quote. I don't have it in front of me, but that he, he is very happy that he ended up joining the LA Galaxy. But the what what was the the conversations to just make that move happen uh, for you and your involvement? Yeah, it, when the conversation starts, it's really about explaining the opportunity here. Right. And it's not just, hey, come to L.A., retire. It's we're trying to wake the sleeping giant, right? We're trying to bring this club back to glory. We've got really good pieces and we want you to come in and and not be the star, right? We don't need you to to be the man, but we want you to come in and, um, you know, help us <clears throat> get to where we're trying to go. And I think for Marco, it was refreshing because, <clears throat> you know, he's in, uh, he's been in Germany for his whole life. You know, he's under a microscope in Dortmund. Uh, you know, he gets to come here. Obviously, we talked about the weather is, is great. Um, the, the club is great. The facilities are great. But he can go to the supermarket and people are like, nice, nice hair, man. And <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. kind of it, right? No one knows who he is. <laughs> sure. Um, They're just catcalling him. They're not really, you know, right. <laughs> focusing <laughs> exactly. on him specifically. <laughs> Yo, what products you use? And he's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, that's great. Um, and then we've got a team that, that wants to compete, right? And I think the thing for, you know, uh, Marco is like the chance to kind of just come and be one of the guys, right? Where he hasn't been uh, kind of ever. And, 
yeah, he's been an awesome addition to the group. He's fit in really seamlessly. You know, he was really respectful in the conversations about mentioning, Hey, I don't want to come in and, and be the guy. I want to, I want to talk to the guys. I want to get together for barbecues. I want to know what the group is like and, and make sure that I can, uh, gel with them. Right. He didn't want to come in and, and step on anybody's toes. So he was a perfect fit. Um, you know, first of all, off the field with his character, who he was, and then his versatility on the field, his experience. I mean, I went to England to watch him in the Champions League final, right? So it's the last game he played here before, I think it was like Colorado was was that. And so, um, you know, he's been in all the biggest games you could possibly be in, and he brings just a different level of experience. And he's a, he's a pretty chill guy, right? I don't know if you don't many um, Germans, but like he's about as chill as a German gets. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, we saw him at, um, we were, we went to Dortmund uh, three, two, three years ago, two years yeah. ago. Uh, and we saw him play at in, against Schalke. And it was unfortunately a game that he got injured in, but the, you saw the sadness and despair on on the fans' faces. Yeah, they, were the just fan, like, they love him. They man. love him so. I mean, just uh, no. The few players are as adored by their own clubs as Marco Royce is to Dortmund. Um, so that that's why you you know like the 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 unfortunate sort of uh, uh, injury history that he's had. Uh, either with Dortmund or with the German national team. It's just like, it's always been like a little bit of like, damn, it's just like the wrong time uh, that, that to have this particular injury. So that, so it's nice to just see him uh, back and, and, and look happy uh, Enjoying himself, uh, on the pitch yeah. uh, for, for the Galaxy. Yeah, it's been awesome. You know, the thing I told Marco was, look, man, this working out for me isn't you coming here, right? It's great that you come here, but this working out is at the end of your time with the Galaxy you saying, hey, this was the best thing I could have possibly done. Because he definitely didn't come for the money, right? So uh, it was really important. <laughs> again, that, again, the, the uh, Brooklyn yeah, realism. Yeah. Just being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's keep it real. <laughs> we ain't we got don't need it. Panama it papers box. this <laughs> we time. We don't have time for anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. We ain't, the Galaxy aren't in the UEFA Champions League. I yeah. promise we're not. <laughs> we ain't getting that check. <laughs> we have a, a couple questions. For I our, do want to ask oh, before we get it. to that. How many, how often do players, especially European players, big names, how often do they reach out to you when you have to be like, nah, this isn't what you think it is. Like, I want someone who's committed. <laughs> uh, weekly, right? Wow. Um, and it's, it's, there's just, a, we're, this is a big club. I mean, you know, when I, when I travel abroad, right, I'm, I'm always shocked right? having been at different places in the past. Like when I travel now, the, the response that I get from people in football internationally is just different. People know the galaxy. There's, there's real weight behind the name. And so, there's always a lot of interest and people see, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, Marco, whether it's somebody like Ibra, whether it's guys like Peck and Paintsill, right? Like now we get, we get calls from Belgium that we didn't get used to get right now. We're getting, uh, uh, what's calls this from Germany code? What's all this so, about? <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, I didn't five, yeah. five, five. All right. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. Um, like I called you eight times. Great, I thought yeah, that was it. scam likely, bro. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love it, man. And uh, that's why when, when Ricky Poos joined the club and they, everybody was asking him like, why, why the galaxy? And I loved his response. He was like, it's the LA galaxy. Like that, Ricky, and how old is he? 24, 23? Like, yeah. There, th he's, yeah. yeah, he's never been in an, uh, in a world where the Galaxy weren't one of the biggest clubs in in in, uh, in Major League There's Soccer. Also 48 stars above the crest. I mean, it's not that hard <laughs> to understand what goes on there. <laughs> so that uh, so that's dope to see. Uh, we have a couple questions from uh, from our our supporters group, Gully Squad, which is our, our Patreon members. Okay. Uh, so we got one. You're a Brooklyn dude. You know what Gully means. You know what Gully means. <laughs> I right? uh, I do. I do. <laughs> I got Jamie Alvarez right here. Like she can't hear what I'm saying. You can't, she can't hear what you guys are saying in the headphones. So that I have to be more careful. But uh, she doesn't so, usually sit in on these interviews. So she's like, yeah. like a hug. Nice. Uh, okay. You're not going to hear Gully on Men in Blazers. I no. promise. All right. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so Kyle Ritchie asked the question: What what has been the biggest reason off the field for the return of the LA Galaxy being a cup contender? I think the the attitude in the the locker room, right? The competitiveness of the group. Uh, it's the right mix of guys. Everybody's hungry. The guys who were here last year are still kind of pissed off, and and the new guys want to show that. Uh, they belong and they're at the level. So you go into this dressing room, <clears throat> you know, I, I think back to like after that first game this season against Miami, right? We, we, we draw one, one and, and look, Busquets has to, you know, basically take a dive to get Marky Delgado thrown out. Then they come back. But 
we're in the locker room afterwards. I remember, you know, John McCarthy just saying, guys, if, if we play like this, like we'll beat a lot of teams. Um, and you could just tell at that moment, like something was different. Right. And we're like, like surreal. Did you just go head to head with Messi? And he's like, oh, yeah. I kind of blacked out. Right. But like, <laughs> it was just like, it, everything felt different from, from jump street. And, uh, it's, it stayed that way ever since. I love it. Yeah. It, it's kind of nice to start the season against the greatest players <laughs> who ever bad. played the game not a, and, of, and not lose and not lose. Yeah. You build, build your confidence. Can I, can I ask and you a quick question? <laughs> not lose is important. I want to ask you a little follow up to that because I, I, I saw on a podcast previously, you were talking about scouting and you said that, one of the most important things for you is to is to find players with championship mentalities. Now, what's one thing? Let's say Christian and I were just very lightly getting into being agents or third party ownership, something <laughs> along that line. Uh, what's one thing we would look for? What does that mean? How do you quantify that in the sport of soccer? What is championship mentality? Yeah, asking for a friend, right? Um, I think there's there's a few different things you can look to, right? One, um, you know, is, has the guy been a captain for his his club or his country, right? There's extra responsibility that that comes with being a captain. Um, you know, does he play for his national team, right? When like if a guy comes here but he's still part of his national team, you you know right off the bat he's got a reason to keep the level high, especially because a lot of national team managers are like, look, you go to MLS and, and you're dead to me. So uh, it's important that a guy like Joe Painsill, who's who's part of the Ghana national team, right? He was an AFCON uh, this past winter, and now they've got qualifiers. Like, he's got to come here and, and keep his level sharp. You know, number of games, right? How many games does this guy plays? This is a guy who plays 30, 40 games a season. Like, is he that competitive? Um, you know, I don't want to give it all away, but I think those are three pretty good things you can mm. look at and get a sense of how competitive uh, guys are. We're getting behind the Okay, curve. no, no, I love it. I'm going to, you know, when I'm, when I'm maybe in your position one day, that's why I'm going <laughs> to, I have the, I have a foundation. Uh, <laughs> David Meyer, uh, he asked a question. He says, is El Trafico at the Rose Bowl on July 4th going to be a new tradition? And just even, I hope, I kind of hope it is. It's starting to feel a little bit like the, the, the Detroit Lions Thanksgiving game or whatever. I hope we get to go. Uh, whichever team invites us is the shirt we'll wear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but how, 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 how I, I know a guy who might be able to hook that up. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> guy from Brooklyn knows a guy. What a shock. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy. The four best words you can say together. I got a guy. Uh, uh, I, I don't know this is the real answer. That's for you know Tom Braun, our president, and our marketing crew. Look, I just, I just go where they tell me, right? We get the schedule. We're like, all right, bet. We'll go and try to come back with three points so but it is it is great to have that building rocking um you know it's become a fun little uh like thing for the league in the middle of the summer um it's been great so i really enjoy it i know our players do so we'll see what happens in the future yeah mm. i'll tell you, i have i've never been to the rose bowl all i me use, neither i usually hear like the um the issue is like either parking don't you have to get there like four hours early or something like that like this it's, it's, it's a it's, big thing it's brutal <laughs> it's brutal yeah it's uh it's just like there's one road in and one road out and then you gotta right. park on a golf course so like once you, you show up early and, and be ready to hang out like if you guys come like yeah just come early and it'll, it'll be fun stay for the fireworks afterwards and done i, I love it yeah. uh well uh will you are you are welcome here if you're ever in new york Please stop. Our by. studios in the city, you're welcome anytime. I mean, I didn't realize it was just going to be three New York dudes just, right, hanging, just out. hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't realize how Yo, New that's York. Why Jamie's here, like, don't get fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We, we got to walk you around your old neighborhood, bro. Esposito and Sons closed. The pork store is done, oh, bro. Sal, Sal's is gone. Bro, like, it's done. All, D'Amico's Coffee is still there, of course. D'Amico's so, Coffee like, will go D'Amico's nowhere. Still there. <laughs> this is, yeah, that's this right. is that's remarkable. Right. But La Bicicleta, which replaced Sal's, is kind of great. Their, their, their baguettes are kind of great. All right. Know, right. Okay. Do it. All right. Yeah, you guys are fancy now. Look, look at this. this is we got a dinner right date with Will Coon's schedule. Yeah, yeah, let's make it happen. We've never been. Do you remember Sam's? Yeah, yeah. My guy, Louis and Sam's used to be. Sam's gone? Yeah, no, 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 still there. Well, off camera, we'll talk. <laughs> I have my thirtieth birthday party at Sam's. Yeah, yeah, we we can get into that later. Lou's great, man. Am- amazing. Uh, no, this yeah. is. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize I was going to do this interview and make a friend. This Familia, is- bro. <laughs> We're no, family. cousins now. I hope you know that. <laughs> no, you guys help me. Like when I'm driving home out here, and like I get to hear some New York. You know, there like, you uh, go. Thank you, man. That means like a lot, nice bro. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and we were talking off air, but uh, I just want to mention on air. Like, thank you for the kind words you had mentioned about uh, our interview with Bob Bradley when Bob Bradley was the head coach um, at, uh, of LAFC. Uh, that was a a big deal for us and a big opportunity. That was in 2020. Uh, one, yeah, 2021 at All-Star. I believe, uh, MLS All-Star. It was an uh, honor for us to do it. That was and that huge. was the first time that MLS 
uh, that they were like, hey, you don't have to be in, in the scrum with the rest of the journal. We're like, we're not really journalists. We're going to make a mockery of the whole profession. We're asking silly questions. <laughs> They're professionals. And we got to, they, the MLS said like, oh, we'll give you uh, a section to the side where you can uh, interview the, uh, the the players and coaches individually. And it, and it was a, a huge moment. So thank you. I for remember when they came to us and they said, Bob has decided he does want to do it. We were like, oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. So uh, Bro, I, I told you guys, I've never heard Bob laugh like that. That's crazy. Like, yeah. I was like, what is going on? I, yeah. I really thought you guys gave him an edible or something. Like, <laughs> I, I had never heard wow. anything like that. It's just so. Will Koontz and Michael Bradley. Never heard Bob Bradley laugh like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> unless, Bob, unless Michael Bradley tripped. Uh, remember how they called us over to the, to the wall? We thought we were getting in trouble after the interview. Someone called us over just yes, to be yes. like, hey, that was great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. never seen him laugh yeah. like that. But we were ready. We're so like, we're so used to being comedians in the world of soccer. We thought someone's going to and be like, cut all of that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, well, Coons, thank he's a you Jersey so guy, much. Though, so once you get him going, it's great. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, well, thank Dude, you. It's so an honor to have you. You know what? Um, we, we have we no, we haven't uh, chatted with uh, Greg Van. Greg Vanny, if you if you want to invite, he's welcome on the show. Yeah, as he's well. also we have, welcome on the show. <laughs> we'll make him laugh too. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm we heard have, of him. <laughs> happy to do that. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This is super super cool. Uh, obviously, it is decision day is uh, this weekend, and uh, LA Galaxy is not. They haven't clinched. The first place just yet, but it, it, you know it's feeling a little bit more likely. So best of luck uh, this weekend, and uh, yeah, like I said, you're welcome on the show anytime, man. Really appreciate uh, uh, you joining us. Appreciate you, fellas. Big fans, of what you do. Thank you, Will Coons. What an amazing, the best, the best. Uh, shout out to him. What for, an honor to have these folks on our podcast. And you know what it is? It's just I think the cool part is that these people want to be on the podcast. It's right. just already. You know what? Another handshake. Right. We're really, we're really crushing it. <laughs> They're like, this show is 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 stupid, but not stupid enough to not for us to not be on yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. that's like that's yeah, the, best yeah. part, the best part. They're so, like, oh, well, have we not been on a stupid show lately? <laughs> we gotta go on cool again. Let's, let's go mix it up <laughs> with the cool again. Uh, so shout out to Will Coons. Thank you again. Um, all right, we gotta get to uh rapido rapido reactions. Reactions. Um, we got a lot, a lot of uh, fun and wild things happening in footy. So uh let's uh, have Carter kick it off, producer Carter to go for it all right the first one for today Lionel Messi scored a hat trick in a 6-0 win over Bolivia your thoughts yeah uh, Bolivia man if you're not playing close to the clouds you're not the same you know what I mean <laughs> I mean they Bolivia wins 1-0 against Colombia and then 6-0 <laughs> yeah. uh, away their at, goal at, differential at goes to zero because they were on a tear <laughs> Messi gets a, a hat trick as well uh so that's I'm sure a lot of Inter-Miami fans are excited about that but this just again just shows the the, the sheer level of uh, dominance uh, that yeah. I think Argentina are are in a play. Comebol, they they're in first, deservedly so. Um, and again, you can we can ask the question about Bolivia because how could they? The the advantage of playing at home is just so stark and so obvious. Yeah, uh, that the team, you know, but it, it is also they play when they're away. They play like they're playing on a different planet. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's also the they they also like when they're at home, you see that the advantage. But then when they were away, you see like they seem slow. They seem tired. Like yeah. the the I think they're it was like, Messi's air so heavy. I think it was Messi's second goal. He did like a one two with I think it might have been uh, uh, Alvarez or, 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 or I think it was maybe Rodrigo de Paul. I don't remember. But it was like a one, the typical Messi, he goes yeah. from, from the right side, passes it to somebody at the top of the box. Glides like, across the, the top of the box. Glides across the top of the box. Yeah. He receives the ball. And in that moment where, again, you know what he's going to do. And yeah. I understand. You I've seen these highlights <laughs> for years. And, and you see the defender just like, who a guy who's probably like 12 years younger yeah. than him be like, Messi, don't run yeah. away from me. <laughs> Why so fast? <laughs> Next up, Carter. All right, next up, uh, Colombia with a 4-0 win. Uh, and John Duran scores again. Seven uh, seven goals now. Off the bench. Bro, this is it. I know he probably don't like this, but, bro, this is your job forever now. <laughs> You're you making it more difficult. You know, like, this is like marriage advice I got from my uncle in Miami. Like, if they ask you to do something... Do it badly, and they'll never ask you to do it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my advice to you, John Duran. You need to start failing yeah. a little bit. You uh, you wash the dishes too well, bro. <laughs> and now that's who you are, bro. Uh, but no, uh, look, a big win. And uh, you know, we were talking about Colombia before, but uh, to to you know, they're I, they're going they're going to the World Cup. Uh, they're 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 correcting the the. Should he start? 
We we were talking about this on on one football about should he start over Ali Watkins at Aston Villa, bro. Um, he's scoring a goal every seventy minutes. That's crazy. It is pretty remarkable. That's Erling Haaland level. Numbers. I would say the only concern I have about John Durant, he's just his his he's left footed. His right foot is kind of abysmal. He barely yeah. doesn't even really use it. How could you say that about a man who's using his left so good? <laughs> I mean, that's it. Maybe there is is some concern about like, I don't know, either hold up play or just linking up with the rest of his teammates. In in, in Colombia, he should be starting. That that's how I I will I'll say that. I think mm. he's done enough and he's in unbelievable form uh to to be the starting striker for uh for Chicago Colombia. Chicago fire zone, bro. Bro, you love to see it. No, the uh but Look, I, I'm I'm happy for uh, John Durant. I'm happy for Colombia. Uh, but yeah, they I, I, they're gonna be fine. But can they dominate Comebol and 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 Argentina? That's uh, crushing doubt it as well. That. I doubt that. All right, next up. All right, next up, Brazil win both of their qualifiers, move into the qualification spots for the World Cup. Yeah, this this wouldn't have been news ever yeah, this in the history <laughs> of, of football. Brazil in uh, they're in fourth uh, in Comebol World Cup qualifying. Um, this is, I guess it's, they're, they're clearly like underachieving, right? We sort of expect yeah. a lot from Brazil and I believe they finished first or sec- second in the last round of World Cup qualifying. I don't remember. I don't they, remember either. They finished first. They finished first. first. Okay. See, um, so they, uh, to have this version of the team right now where like nobody exactly knows like what the identity it's a little sort scattered of it. it's yeah. a little scattered it's just like you know every individual player is an absolute is, is brilliant on the ball and, and you, you know that uh, uh how impressive they all are like at their clubs they're just not jogo bonito wing yeah you know they, i mean they, we need not, to jogo bonito they need to find that unity as a team i don't know if you saw uh just just today uh neymar is now ba- uh, back uh That's training right. with his team That's going to be huge for this team he's yeah. a leader so maybe having Neymar back in the fold um, might be something that will, will help unify this team. Because as much as people criticize Neymar about what, his lifestyle or whatever, yeah. there is something. people He's not the Messi to Brazil. No, but the team rallies the, around him. The team him. rallies around him. So uh, it, it, that'd be great uh, to see. So, uh, But no, but I mean, some of the other players that are, uh, I think, doing great. Uh, Rafinha. Killing uh, it. Killing it at, at, at Barca. And, and even... Rafinha be- becoming like a but more of a leader that than crazy. W- I didn't think he had it than, yeah, that we saw in the past. All right, next up. All right, Cardi B went to a PSG game and wanted to sit with the ultras. Your thoughts? Yeah, we got to <laughs> so, let's play the clip because this is this is why you invite <laughs> someone like Cardi B to a game. So she, uh, so Cardi B just has the caption why they sat me in the boring side. So here it goes. I want to be over there. This side is mad quiet, like. I don't want to sit with the bougie people. I want to sit with the rats. With the rats. <laughs> sit me with the rats. Sit me with the ratch is, uh, I mean, my new slogan. Uh, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love this. And this is, what's funny is that we were at a PSG mm-hmm. game. We went, we went to Messi's debut. We went to Messi's debut uh, at Parc de Prince, And uh, we had probably had the same exact experience. We yeah. were around the bougiest of we people. We couldn't get tickets in that section. No, there's no, there's no way. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, so while we're there, we were sitting next to, uh, what was it? The guy that didn't know. Wh- so he, so this was his whole thing. He's American. He goes, why would they let in? So Leon scores. Paqueta, I think, scored. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he goes, why would they let in so many Leon fans? I said, where are they? And he goes, right there, look at that. They're all cheering. I go, they, they're they PSG fans. He goes, no, they're rooting when they, they were cheering when the goal got scored. I go, they've been singing this whole match. They're going to sing for 90 minutes. He goes, really? I said, yeah, that's how that's how soccer is. These are ultras. He goes, oh, well, football games are like NFL games yeah, are yeah. like this. <laughs> I, he just didn't understand. He thought all those people cheering were <laughs> Lyon fans because they rooted after the goal got scored. I'm like, no, they're cheering harder for their team to now equalize. <laughs> exactly. Could so, not get it. So shout out to Cardi B. You love seeing uh, Dominicans. Sit it with the Ratch, bro. Sit it with the Ratch. Imagine PSG holding a flare at a at a PSG game. The Ratch Ultras, bro. <laughs> okay. I call it Cardi PSG. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> what's, uh, what's next? All right, our last one for today. The Dominican Republic, Christian's Dominican Republic, are, are one win away from their first ever Gold Cup berth. Let's start with you, Christian. Vamos. Bro, this would be 
unprecedented. Dude, the Dominican Republic are playing. This would be unprecedented. <laughs> Unpre- for the beer. <laughs> for the, the Dominican DR beer. The are playing in the Nations League. Uh, it, the, these games are also fascinating. They just played two games. Uh, uh, one against uh, Antigua and Barbuda. Barbuda home yeah. and away. They both they won both games 5-0. Uh, they, they, they play. That's crazy. That's baseball numbers. You, you, you see the, the, the stadiums and there's. There, I don't know if people are there. The, the people might be behind the camera. Like I, 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 yeah. re- I literally don't know if people are going to these games. So <laughs> whether it was in the, I think they made DR the 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 one against uh, Antigua and Barbuda. I, I I didn't see one. There were no seats. There were no bleachers. I did see. So I saw clips of this. And yeah, I was yeah. like, they did this at a high school. <laughs> Is it a closed door friendly? Yeah. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Um, but no, Dominican Republic have been. Fantastic! They've won uh, all four of their matches in uh, Nations League B. Uh, the the winner of the group of each of the uh, Nations League group gets an automatic berth into the Gold Cup. So I think what just one more win and they uh, clinch that. This uh, is huge. But this is not only and, and we've you know Junior Firpo of Leeds got two goals uh, in this game and I think he got one in the in the previous one. But the the ambition. It's not just qualifying for their first ever Gold Cup. It is qualifying for the World Cup. And they are talking about it. And they have big, big plans. And, and you you see the desire. Uh, you know, the, obviously, having Junior Fipo there is remarkable because you can see the quality Bro. immediately. While Very you're- different than everyone else. <laughs> you know, like in the World Cup, you got all those roaming, like, groups of fans. Like, it seems like all of Saudi Arabia is over here. All of Qatar is over here. All of Canada mm-hmm. is over here. Imagine a Dominican contingent. That's Bro. what I- you're gonna be hearing that all oh. game, bro. <laughs> so, uh, shout out to Dominican Republic. Nice. I saw the Kilo Kids out there. Bro. You love to see it. It was so so cool. So, uh, uh, yeah, Caribbean football, baby. Uh, gold, cup, gold Cup at Dr. Rebel Arena. Let's do oh, it, bro. God. <laughs> so, uh, thank you again, the Tigres di- <laughs> that are gonna show up for that, bro. <laughs> okay, it's just uh, it's gonna bring you bring, bring your wife and your side piece. Yeah, oh, everybody, man. Everybody, everybody, everybody get along. <laughs> Everybody we get have, along. We have to squash the beef. That's right. And we're gonna have. We're gonna. We're gonna crown the winner of um of the of the match uh in the stands, and that's whoever has the most slashes and zippers on their jeans. Bro. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, look, that's our culture. Okay. <laughs> Respect their culture. <laughs> so thank you again. Extra uh, points if you bought those jeans at a barbershop. <laughs> uh, shout out to Will Koontz, uh, the LA Galaxy GM, for joining us. Uh, uh, and thank you everybody for tuning in to another. Uh, fun episode of The Cooligans. We'll be back on Monday. We have an incredible guest on Monday. Speaking of the mm. business of the game, we're going to be joined by CEO of Eintracht Frankfurt, Axel Hellman. Uh, to be talking Alexis is... Nothing but money. Nothing got, but money out here, okay? It's money team out we, here, we, fam. <laughs> okay, they're going to be stacks of money on the uh, desk bro, in the, during this interview. Bro, we we talk about adding more games to the calendar. We're out here trying to make revenue. <laughs> okay. You feel me? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're bad people. Bro, okay. <laughs> <laughs> calendar congestion. I don't know what you're talking about. I got count money on every day. That exactly. you know? <laughs> right. I'm tired of these tattoo millionaires. Yeah, right? nah, bro. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna. So he'll, he'll be here on Monday. Uh, so we'll be. Uh, obviously, club football is back this weekend as well. So we have a lot to uh, discuss. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, hit the subscribe button here on YouTube or where you're listening to the podcast. We appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all Monday. Have a good weekend. Peace, everybody. Love you guys.